And welcome back to Pharmacology with Nick. I'm Nurse Nick. Today we're going to be going over respiratory drugs. So I'm a pharmacology instructor. I'm American Heart Association, ACLS, and PALS instructor. And I'm also an emergency department nurse. So in part one of this respiratory drug series, we're going to start going, uh, we're going to start with albuterol. So you should know that albuterol is a beta-2 adrenergic agonist. It's a beta-2 drug. But this is a short-acting drug. It's a rescue inhaler. Anytime you use a rescue inhaler, a lot of questions that are centered around albuterol are going to be uh, which inhaled medication you're going to take first. It's going to be the beta-2. You're going to make sure you exhale completely before you go take the inhaled medication. Usually it should be done through a chamber, but I know it's not like a strict rule with the NCLEX because you may not have one. Um, but you should always wait five minutes before taking another medication because sometimes they say, if you have two medications available, like an inhaled glucocorticoid, like um, uh, beclomethazone, you want to take the inhaler first, the albuterol, because it causes bronchodilation. It's going to open up those passageways, and it's going to let you take that inhaled steroid and get further down into your lungs to be more effective, right? So albuterol is a short-acting medication. It's a bronchodilator, beta-2 adrenergic agonist, but this medication can cause tachycardia, angina, cause tremors. I don't know if you've ever had breathing treatment at the hospital, emergency department, or shortness of breath, but your patients are going to be kind of fidgety after they have a couple breathing treatments. But it really does open up their airways, given for asthma situations, uh, bronchitis situations, to, to open up those airways. Salmeterol, not to be confused with solumedrol, salmeterol is going to be another beta-2 adrenergic agonist, but salmeterol is going to be a long-acting medication. It's not going to be the rescue inhaler. Salmeterol is also known as Advair, right? Oh, okay, Advair, salmeterol. So albuterol, short-acting, rescue inhaler. Wait five minutes before you take another medication. You should always rinse out your mouth after these medications. And salmeterol is Advair. It's the long-acting beta-2 adrenergic agonist. So the next medication is going to be glucocorticoids. Okay, so the inhaled glucocorticoid is going to be beclomethazone. Notice the suffix of these medications that are steroids. Beclomethazone, prednisone, prednisolone, methylprednisolone. Um, all of them that end with a zone alone are going to be steroids. So beclomethazone is the medication. It's going to be an inhaled steroid. You wait five minutes after albuterol and you can go ahead and take this. But always rinse out your mouth because in inhaled steroids, you're going to have the risk for that word candidiasis, which is like a thrush, and it's going to be a fungal infection in your mouth. So always rinse out your mouth after you use inhaled uh, MDIs, or meter dose inhalers, or any kind of inhalers at all. So the next medication is going to be prednisone. So prednisone, there's a lot to remember with steroids. As you go through pharmacology, you're going to have to remember one or two details with each drug, but steroid has a, a small novel written about it. So you really want to take these in, all right? So prednisone is going to be a drug. It can cause hyperglycemia with oral steroids. It can cause uh, thin skin. It can cause water retention. It can cause immunosuppression. It can cause that moon face. It causes an increase in hunger. And it also causes you to stay up later. So you want to try to take it earlier in the day. Now, this medication can be given for long-term use. So long-term use of steroids, a lot of the time, are going to be given for autoimmune disorders like uh, lupus flare-ups or autoimmune disorders like uh, RA, or rheumatoid arthritis, right? Long-term use of steroids may cause bone density problems. So you want to look for risk for fractures, broken bones, uh, watch for risk with falls when you're on steroids. Uh, maybe somebody needs to get a bone density scan um, if they're on long-term steroid use. Uh, but lastly, this medication, um, a lot of people remember this with NSAIDs because NSAIDs have a high risk for creating what? It's going to be gastric ulcers. You can cause GI ulcers. Steroids are terrible, terrible, terrible. If you want to remember anything about this drug, they also cause really bad ulcers. So do not give this medication during anybody that has ulcers at a risk for ulcers, or do not give NSAIDs when you're given steroids, vice versa. Very good. So the next medication is going to be um, mimetazone or fluticasone. So mimetazone is uh, Nasonex, or fluticasone is going to be Flonase. These medications are in more inhaled steroids, but they're nasal steroids, right? So you kind of in inhale them in your nose. 
So it treats rhinitis. You should remember the word rhinitis. All these med terms, they kind of get created with a, some of these treatments. Rhinitis just means nasal congestion. But it kind of makes sense. If you're gonna push something, you know, inhale something in your nose, it might cause a headache. It might cause nasal burning. But this medication can also cause pharyngitis, which itis, inflammation, your pharynx, pharyngitis, right? So the next medication is guafenicin. So guafenicin, I love this medication. Well, I, I like teaching this medication because it's kind of fun. I remember that booger guy because this is Mucinex, okay? So everybody's seen the Mucinex commercials where little booger dudes kind of just jumping around. So uh, the students in my class say they name that guy Guafi, right? The little booger guy is Guafi. So the education, this medication is expectorant. So if you feel like you got some phlegm or some kind of mucus buildup and you can't get it up, you want to take this expectorant, which is guafenicin, also known as mucinex, for non-productive coughs. And make sure you drink plenty of water because the more hydrated you are, you'll be able to cough it up and then you can meet guafi. It's, it's terrible. It's terribly disgusting. I know. Forgive me. So the next medication is going to be acetylcysteine. So acetylcysteine is actually a mucolytic. Uh, mucolytic, lytic, lysis, breaks down mucus. And a lot of times this medication is going to be given um, for severe uh, thick secretions like people that have CF, cystic fibrosis. And um, uh, cystic fibrosis is going to be the overproduction of all that mucus. A lot of those uh, patients are going to be on oxygen um, and probably even need lung transplants, right? But acetylcysteine also is the antidote for Tylenol. Acetylcysteine is the antidote for acetaminophen. Acetylcysteine, acetaminophen, antidote. So acetaminophen overdoses, might get acetylcysteine. Patient education, when you give acetylcysteine, there's a few weird things about it. So it's kind of given like uh, an Alka-Seltzer where you throw it in, it kind of dissolves and mixes it up, but it smells like rotten eggs, it smells like sulfur. So you can may, might be able to mix it with some Sprite, give it to a patient, make sure you put a lid on it, tell them to try to drink it down fast, uh, don't let them smell it, maybe drink it through a straw, um, and, and it smells like rotten eggs. So acetylcysteine can be given for that, uh, that mucus uh, breakdown or the antidote for Tylenol. You also definitely remember your antidotes for the NCLEX. So the last one for respiratory I'm gonna go over right now, this is called a leukotriene modifier. Uh, Leukotriene modifier is going to be Montuculast or Singular. So a lot of people take Singular. Montuculast is a medication that's only taken at night, and this is an asthma drug. Okay, so this treats asthma. It's given for exercise-induced asthma or bronchoconstriction. It's not a rescue drug. It's a maintenance drug. You want to take this medication at night, or you can take it two hours before you exercise. All right, and this medication possibly might also increase your liver enzymes. So that's it for this respiratory video. Still more to come. Like and follow. We'll be submitting some more uh, farm and clicks videos. Thank you guys.